And welcome. This is Chloe from Cousin DIY. Today we have a fun project for you. We're going to make ghost garlands using our floss, um, our black cord, one and a half inch, now I painted these, one and a half inch styrofoam balls, toothpicks, our downloadable little sayings that we will attach at the end using the toothpicks, a uh, piece of cardboard, which is 10 inches by five or six inches wide. And let's see if I've forgotten anything. Uh, oh yes, yeah, some Swarovski crystals, um, black and white, and some display pins, which are double-sided pins that we will help us push the floss bundles into the styrofoam balls. We'll also be using a few black jump rings. So let's get started. I'll show you the color combinations that I picked out. I picked out black, gray, and silver for one ghost. And for that, I painted this styrofoam ball black. I found that it helped to paint the styrofoam ball because the floss might not totally cover around the ball and that way it's not noticeable and it becomes kind of part of it. Um, I went ahead and painted this white but, but it was white to begin with and for this combination I used two white in this glittery floss. Next I I'm using two skeins of orange and one of the gold. And for that, I painted this ball orange. Next, two green in this glittery, in this glittery uh, blue-green cord, metallic floss cord, and I painted my ball green. And lastly, two skeins of purple, this purple metallic variegated cord, and I painted my ball purple. So I'm going to show you how to make one. Uh, today I think we'll, we'll work with the orange first. I'll show you how to make one, then I'll make the other four and come back and we'll put together the garland. So, set that aside. This is my 10 by 5 or 6 inch wide piece of cardboard. Now, this, for this, I find that this floss tends to get tangled. So don't get frustrated uh, with yourself or with me. Um, I'm try, I, I'll try my best to prevent it from tangling by getting it started. It's kind of wrapped in loops. And what I do is I join one end of each of these three skeins as such. One end of each skein even them up. Uh, and it's helpful actually, I didn't mention tape, but I think I'll use tape. Take a little piece of tape. Tape the ends on like that. And then we're gonna start wrapping the joint cords around the cardboard. Now, at 
this point, I'm going to from another skein, I'm going to cut three little lengths of black floss. Doesn't matter what color really. Set those aside. Then I am going to cut, go underneath the cords on one side of the cardboard and I'm going to remove the uh, tape that we started with and I'm going to cut flush with that end. Then I'm going to go down to this end of the cardboard. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to repeat This is the same step. So now I'm going to slide my cardboard out. And then I'm going to divide these cords into somewhat equal groups of, th or even groups of three. And I'm going to take the time to try to line up the ends. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to take one of the pieces of black that I cut, slide it underneath the middle of one group, tie a loose knot, and then see if I'm in the middle and here again, this is where I can kind of even, even things off to the left and right as I see cords that are longer on one side than the other. Where does that one come from? Over there. Okay. So now that I've got that pretty much in the middle, I'm going to snug it tight, tie it into a triple knot, set it aside, and do the same thing with my other two groups of floss cords. So now that I have my three groups, Make sure your knots are nice and snug at the top, and then I'm going to trim the tails of that black knot. Make sure it's nice and snug. Make sure not to cut your knot. Now, I suppose um, I use display pins to hold these on to the styrofoam balls, but I suppose you could use a glue gun or some really heavy duty glue. But I happen to have these. As you can see, they have two prongs. When I painted my balls, I put them on toothpicks, which was very helpful. It's also helpful to work with them at this point. So we take my first group of three and I am Right in the middle of the top, I'm taking a display pen right across the middle cord, a display pen right through the middle of that cord, and I'm pushing it down. So here we have one in place. At this point, it kind of looks like hair. <laughs> you could you could draw a little face on that, make pigtails, but we're gonna make ghosts. So then I'm going to take the next group and I'm going to st just straddle it ever so off center, lining it up with my other display pen. So I'm filling in next to that one on that side and next to this one on this side. Put 
push that in. And lastly, this one I'm going to line up so it covers that side and that side. So it's kind of a ghost-like drape going on here. Push my display pin in. And these display pins I found hold really well in this styrofoam. If you're working with children, this is a, a step where they're going to need supervision. So at this point, this is what we have. We can even this all off later with our scissors, if desired, unless you like that spooky unevenness. Uh, and at this point, I have black beads that I'm using for the eyes. And I have to find my needle threader, which I believe is hiding on me over here somewhere. Where are you, needle threader? I'm going to go find my needle threader and I'll be right back. Now I'm going to take a look and find out where I want to place the eyes on my orange ghost. And I think I'm going to place them like about right here and right there. So I'm going to choose my first orange. I think they uh, they hold better on the on the non-metallic floss than they do on the metallic floss. So I'm going to select this one right here, one strand. I'm going to put my needle threader through that bead. Put my floss through the needle threader and then pull the floss through the bead and we're going to do that one more time At this point, I'm going to set this one aside and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make four more. When I have those made, I'll be back. Welcome back. Now I have all my ghosts finished. I'll show them to you one by one. My purple ghost with opal eyes. My green ghost with black eyes. By the way, these crystals are all Swarovski, six millimeter. My white ghost with black eyes. My black and gray ghost with white opal eyes. And once again, my orange ghost with black eyes. For the next step, I am going to cut five lengths of black floss. You could use any color, but I happen to have some black left over right here. I'm going to cut that to uh, six inches, approximately. And this is where the jump rings come in. I'm going to attach This is a four millimeter. You could use six. 
I suppose. Start with my orange. I'm going to go through a display pin. It's at the top of the head of the ghost. I'm going to slide one end of that black cord that I just cut. I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to tie a triple knot on the end to attach it to that jump ring. One. I think I have enough cord to do three. If not, two will do. Two or three. Two. Three. I just don't want it to fall off. Here we go. Pull it really snug. Then you can trim the tail. Oh. I used the wrong piece. Oh, well, that's all right. I'll measure back six. Then I will take another four millimeter jump ring and I'm going to tie that around that jumper in, tie this cord around that jumper in, twice, nice and tight. And for right now, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to move on to the next ghost and do the same thing. I've cut a three foot length of this heavier satin cord, black satin, and I'm going to slide the top jump ring in the order I want my, my ghost to be, trying to get the eyes so they all go in the same direction. That could be tricky. So what, and then figure out what order you want to hang them in. And let's play around with this. Black, green, white. Orange and purple. That's, that's okay with me. So I'm going to start with orange and I'm going to let this hang and then I'm going to try to put the eyes may not all be facing the same way in the end but we'll, we'll try put that through okay. the next step I'm going to take six millimeter jump rings And use triple knots to tie those onto each end of this heavy cord. Maybe double knots. Let's say double knots. Make sure they're nice and tight. And I'm just doing that. Um, this way it'll be versatile. You could hang this on little nails that you might have or little hooks or you can go ahead and take them. Do the same on the other end. I'm going to go ahead and open up a room divider that we have here and stretch my garland out, tape it on, The last step is to cut out all your spooky sayings, which we have done. 
turn them upside down. Now we printed ours on heavy stock paper. Take a toothpick. And so that you're saying be positioned And I think I'll stick this one on this guy. And this one on this guy. Now that we have all our phrases attached to our ghosts, our project is complete. If you decide to make your own ghost garland, please share it with us on Instagram at hashtag createwithcousin. Thanks for joining us today. See you again soon. Bye.